2015 was when I got my first data engineering job at Teradata. I started there making about $80,000 a year. I assume by the time I was 30, right, I was going to be making like double that, right? Like, like 150, 160, right? And, and like, and I thought if I was doing that, I was going to be in a very, very good, amazing situation. And one of the things, I guess, one of the motivators for me to share my salary history and share my compensation stuff is just to kind of like try to inspire people, right? And being like, you don't even realize what you're capable of because I didn't. I didn't, right? I didn't understand. I didn't understand that like I could do that without managing people or being a director or being a VP, right? Or like all of these things. Like you can really just have really strong technical skills and and if you have those skills, like and, and you can get the good interviews and then you can a lot of times make a lot of money. This episode of Ken's Nearest Neighbors is powered by Z by HP. HP's high compute, workstation grade line of products and solutions. Today, I have Zach Wilson in. Hello. <laughs> really excited to have Zach back on the podcast. Thank you. We had an awesome chat last time. And since then, uh, quite a bit has happened. Oh, yeah. You know, so you've changed your title from tech lead to staff engineer. Oh, yeah. That, um, was, that was wild. <laughs> that, that was a crazy day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you've, you've had a lot of, of different experiences, exposure on LinkedIn. You've taken mm. some time off. You've taken some, mm-hmm. some time on. Mm-hmm. Um, you also came on the content trip that was sponsored by Bright Data. Oh, yeah. Um, and we got to know each other significantly better. And we got yeah, it's to, been amazing. Yeah, this yeah, trip got, has been so amazing. I got to meet Lulu, too, which is... Zach's amazing husky, who's giving us a yawn right now. Yep. <laughs> um, and yeah, you know, I'm I'm just really grateful that we were able to catch up and and get to get to actually hang out and and learn a lot more about each other. Yeah, this trip has been a very inspiring time. Just like being able to be around all these creators who are like, one of the things that it's really opened my eyes to is just like what is even possible, right? Like and like what uh like and and the right way to do things and like equipment that i might need to buy and like all those kind of stuff to like really you know create content that's at like the highest level right because definitely youtube and video content is is a very different ball game from like a linkedin post right and so yeah i'm excited that's been, i've learned so much on this trip it's been great if you had <laughs> one high level takeaway what would what would the big thing be um i think the uh, the high level takeaway is like investing in systems right and and not doing everything yourself that's i think one of the biggest things i think i've taken away from this is that like there are going to be elements of this that need to be delegated and elements that like you should not be spending your time on and and like having someone else do that (laughs) i think like that's a big one i think another big kind of takeaway that i've i've I've, I've came across is just that like you need to have like good equipment like I, one, one of the assumptions that I had before um, going this trip is that yeah my, 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 my iPhone should be good enough for uh, shooting a uh, good video good quality video but I think that like actually investing in a solid camera is something that now I'm a lot more open to for sure yeah <laughs> I, I think like you can get it done with a with a cell phone mm-hmm. but there's something about like investing in your work and in yourself that I think pays dividends with the quality of the work that comes out of it. So it's like, yes, I bought a new camera, right? Mm-hmm. I spent X, Y, Z dollars on it. But because I bought that new camera, I'm going to feel obligated to use it and learn about it. Mm-hmm. And if I learn about the camera, then I'm going to probably shoot better video, right? Oh, and, and like that, that feedback loop is what makes the content grow over time is like, it's not just like, oh, I'm going to get it. And like, just because I have it, I'm going to get better. Mm-hmm. No, it's because you hold like accountability to it and to yourself uh, in some sense. And I think that those mechanisms, it's like a system to encourage you to, <laughs> to like work harder on things or do better on things, which is. Oh yeah. And there's that whole thing of like, I know like for me, when I was, when I was transitioning from like graduating college to getting, getting my first programming job, there was a day, it was like in a summer of 2014 where like I, cause before, uh, before, um, program before I got into the profession, like I did all my development on like a windows machine. Right. It was like, I don't know, it was like a 600, $700 laptop. That was a windows machine. And, uh, and then I got, uh, my first MacBook pro in 2014 and then 
that was like really inspiring. Cause when I got the computer, I was like, this is a fancy computer. I need to like use this fancy computer to like, you know, build fancy stuff. And I think that that's like investing in a camera and investing in the tools to like do the thing that you want to do so that you can play the role that you want to play. Right. is super important and super important. And like, and I think that that's the other thing that I've noticed, especially about this trip is that like, it's helping me like kind of develop that network of people who are doing similar things that I'm doing. Cause it's definitely one of those things that has been interesting for me as a creator. It's like, cause in some regards, like I feel like other people in my life have like, they don't get it. They don't get it. But I, I definitely, you know, like I've, I, you know, I had a girlfriend who didn't get it. Right. And that, we're now, and she's an ex now. Right. And other things like that. Right. We're just people in my life. They don't get cr- content creation. Right. And they don't understand. Right. And so like, it can kind of, at least for me, it's actually been in some regards kind of isolating in some aspects. And I think that's one of the things that's been amazing about this trip is it's like everyone on this trip gets it. They understand what, why, why, why we do this. Right. And they understand why, like why we view this as important. And I think that's been freaking awesome. <laughs> yeah. That, that like understanding of like, Oh, like you don't have to do things the traditional way. It, it, mm-hmm. You can, you can do content. You can have fun with it. I, I remember, I think I mentioned this maybe once before, but I was dating a girl when I was just starting YouTube, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah, I was I was working full time then. Yeah, you know, I was making pretty good money. Let's you know it's over six figures a year, and I spent I think like a thousand dollars on a camera. Mm-hmm. And you know she's like, I, you know I can't. Why would you waste money like that? This is just a hobby, all this stuff. And you know I mm-hmm. I bought it because I hit a thousand YouTube subscribers. To me, yeah. which was like a m- massive milestone. I was like, oh, yeah. okay, that means it's serious. It's yeah, whatever it is. So it's like a small town. Yeah, exactly <laughs> for and sure. It, and it's like okay, well, you know th- that was a, a, obviously things didn't end up working out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I mean things worked out great for me, especially yeah. with YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> camera, right? But but <laughs> yeah, you found out YouTube's the one. <laughs> exactly. But but there's something so special about having a, a network a group of people around you that are enabling your goals and not detracting from them mm-hmm. i think that that's something that has been the biggest change in my life in the last like two years has mm-hmm. been there's so many more people now in my life that i'm like hey um i want to do this they're mm-hmm. like yeah you can do that that's incredible you should try it out mm-hmm. um and there's so many less people that are like, oh, what if this happens? What if this happens? It could all go wrong. Uh, and, you know, of course, you want, like, pushback. If, if I have a stupid idea, I want people to, to like, poke holes in it. Mm-hmm. But it's never poking holes in, like, oh, it'll never work. It's like, it could work if you tried it this way. Mm-hmm. Or maybe you should rethink it this way. There's this dialogue around it. Yeah. And that, to me, is the type of ecosystem that you want to create in your life. Oh, yeah. Like, because if you, like... I definitely noticed that was something that uh, was a big change in my life. Like when I uh, first moved out of Utah back in 2016, like I, uh, I definitely felt like there was such a, even, even when I was like interviewing for jobs, cause I moved to Washington DC and I got this job at research innovations. And like, when I got that job, like there was so much like pushback in, in Utah from everyone in my life. It was like, just stay in Utah. Don't, don't, don't do this. Like, it's not going to be, you're just, it's not going to be safe. Is it safe in Washington, DC? I heard people get murdered in Washington, DC. Right. Like, and the, like all sorts of other things like that. Right. Uh, all sorts of just like, you know, kind of fear based things. And they're trying to like project their own fear onto you to like make you believe what they believe. Right. And like when that's not like, it doesn't help. Right. It really like, yeah, I totally get you on that. Like the, it's, it's important to not just have like be surrounded by people who are like, yes, 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 Ken, you can be an astronaut. Yes, Ken, you can go to the moon, right? And like, I mean, you want them to tell you how it is, like, and be supportive for the most part, right? Because it's like, most of the time, if you're asking for feedback on something, it's probably something that you want to do, right? Yeah. But like, and that's where it's like kind of guiding and maybe adding more nuance and flavor is good. But like, if you're just like, that's the dumbest idea I've ever heard, or like, you know, just other things that are just like, mostly just a put down they're not like adding any crystalling to it or anything that's like making it more like oh yeah that's something i hadn't thought about right and you know you know <laughs> you just talking through that gave me this sort of like light bulb and this this nuance that mm-hmm. that i want to add here is that i think the way things are now the ecosystem that's created is that 
everyone I'm talking to, a lot of the people that I'm talking to mm-hmm. when I'm proposing these ideas, they understand it, right? Mm-hmm. They get it and they support it from a place of like understanding and wanting to support it. Probably, yeah. you know, a lot of times wanting to be a part of it. You have a different type of where you're like friends or your significant other, or, like, you know, some people's parents also that are like, mm-hmm. We want you to be successful. We want you to be happy. We support you in whatever you do, but mm-hmm. we don't necessarily get it. And then there's that other group yeah. where it's like, we don't get it. And because we don't get it, we don't think you should do it. Or it's scary or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Or it's weird or you're doing something that like is dumb or risky or like they, they, and they, yeah, those are, the, those are, that's a very clean delineation of like all the different buckets of things, right? And trying to see how all those things work together. And yeah, it's, it's, it's very challenging because I know for a lot of people out there, that's like if they have a dream that's more unconventional or they have a dream that's a little bit different, like that, like there's, their parents are like, very not supportive of it right because they 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 actually their parents end up being in that in that third bucket of like being like no like your dream is dumb your dream is stupid like go and go and get a get a safe job or whatever right and i think uh that can be that can be very challenging right and like that's where trying to surround yourself with friends who like because that's you know you can't really you don't get to pick your parents right your parents who are your parents are right that's just not that's not in the cards you don't get to pick them but you do get to pick your friends right and that's one of the things that i think is that's the area of your life that where you can still get that support right even if like other areas of your life are unsupportive so you know we talk about friends we talk mm-hmm. about support uh we have a lot of friends on linkedin oh yeah right? mm-hmm. um but they're in some sense digital friends. What's the difference between having friends on a digital medium and actually mm-hmm. coming to something like this where you're around other people and you're interacting? Oh yeah, it's it's very it's very there's a very big difference, right? Like cuz I guess like for a lot of stuff on LinkedIn that is, is and this is one of the pieces that kind of has felt kind of more isolating about it, right? Is that like I don't know, I would say like most of the people that I interact with on LinkedIn like they want to ask me like a question, right? They want to ask me for like career advice. They want to ask me about like, you know, something. They want to ask me about a data pipeline or whatever, right? And uh, and, and, I, and, I, and I love teaching people and I love like creating stuff and everything. And that's where like, it's, it's been a little bit trickier to like kind of build friendships from that, right? Because it always feels like it's coming from like a place of like almost like mentorship and like yeah, trying like to help grow me people. And, yeah, and yeah. And, like, and then... Yeah. It's a it's a very hard way to like start off a friendship is like with that right. So, uh, I I like actually find it similar to like there's very egregious examples of this on LinkedIn right where people will they connect with you and then they're immediately like hey Zach can you refer me to Airbnb like and like freaking uh, and I have not said a word to this person and they just go immediately for the ask right and it's like that's. I've always wondered, like, does that ever work for anybody? Like, I don't know. It's just really weird that, like, people just, like, immediately, like, they don't want to try to establish rapport, like, actually, like, build a, a relationship with someone. They're just like, nah, like, I, I, I just need you to, you know, do this thing for me so I can get an interview or whatever, right? And I don't know. Like, I, but the, an event like this is really different because one of the things that I really like about this is, like, one, it's been, like because of it's the fact that it's like multiple days like i get to see people in a bunch of different states as well right it's like i get to see like i i, I get to see y'all like when you're sleepy and when you're hungry and like when you're when you just had your coffee or like you know you get to see you get to see this like kind of high fidelity image of a person right whereas like you know most of my stuff on linkedin is like okay i'll go for a meetup and i meet someone for like an hour or two but like i get like one state of that person right as opposed to like seeing a higher number of states of people right which uh, it makes it you you feel closer to people in that way right when you can see like how they are in more states and so i think that's one of the things that's been really cool is like being able to like just make a lot of cool friends and learn a lot from people like i i (laughs) couldn't agree more i i I didn't think of it in terms of states but i Mm. thought of it in terms of like the time and the types of conversations you have, mm-hmm. right? In that one hour that you described, mm-hmm. you're going to talk about sort of the most pressing things. Mm-hmm. You're going to say, oh, I I, I want to make sure, you know, I was for an hour. I want to make sure I talk to him about this and about mm-hmm. this. And mm-hmm. there isn't just like sort of BS conversation that talks mm-hmm. about your life and your and your history and the, your like mm-hmm. aspirations and, and just sort of these random things that make people inherently human. Yeah. And I think that to me, that's, sort of the meat of this is we get to know each other so much better than those just like sort of bite-sized interactions we get we get to you get a more encompassing type of 
uh, of conversation. Mm -hmm. And through those, you start to figure out how you can like create value for other people in their life and how other people can create value for you in your life. And I think that that's sort of what the crux of a lot of this is, is that, Mm -hmm. you know, one of the, one of the things you describe is like a lot of the reactions or the interactions on LinkedIn or on YouTube Mm is one direction. Right. Yeah. And I, w- I would like to think that in, in these types of meetups, everyone can get value from each other. Mm-hmm. And, you know, whether it's just like hanging out. Hi, Lulu. <laughs> oh, come, come in the frame just a little bit. Come here. Come oh, here, Lulu. Oh, watch the computer. Oh, 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 there there, there the she computer. is. Oh, hi, hi. <laughs> I know I taste good, don't I? Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, it's, it's about sort of these mutually beneficial relationships or these mm-hmm. um these like learning relationships that that i really value um and you know some people will think it's like a bit a bit harsh to talk about oh like it, it's like they think that's saying a relationship is transactional right mm-hmm. but that's not how i view it it's like we're all here because mm-hmm. like it's fun to create value for other people it's, yep. like, that's what we do with all our content mm-hmm. and if we can do that with our friends yeah that's like an added benefit it is I, I, definitely yeah. for sure like we can broadcast our lives dude <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, and you know, like obviously you mentioned broadcasting our lives that can also like sort of, so sort of bite us sometimes too. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, you, you've had a couple, a couple, uh, LinkedIn posts this year that have gotten very popular. Oh yeah, for sure. With popularity, there comes polarity. Yeah. (laughs) And just like overwhelmed too. Like, like it's one of those things like, you know, with humans, like we're, our, our genetics are for we can remember 150 people right that's like the number of people that like that's the village mentality right that's like so humans are really only ever supposed to process that number of humans like that's like the 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 upper end right and then like when you have these things like social media like oh 150 okay how about 5 million and it's like you because it's like when you try to even imagine 5 million people like you can't like it's just it's it's too many people right it's 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 such a such a vast number that your brain can't even really grapple with it and i think that that's i think that's one of the things that's tricky about it because i also uh like you want to engage right because like a lot of people will like because once something's shown to five million people even if like the number of like jerks and assholes in the world is like 0.001 percent there's gonna be like I don't know, 200 of them on your post now just yeah. because of like 5 million times that is still a big number, right? And uh, and I, and it's one of those things that like is interesting because it's like I want to go viral, but I also kind of don't, right? Like, <laughs> like yeah. because it's just there's – it's so much – it's so overwhelming when it happens. Like it's it's interesting. <laughs> it, it's funny that you mentioned that because there's this sort of vocal minority – that you mm-hmm. see as someone who gets like a lot of volume as a content creator, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's those those two hundred assholes are more vocal mm-hmm. than the two hundred nicest people, mm-hmm. right? And they're gonna say some some rough stuff. Hi, Lulu. Watch the ports, please. Oh, not my don't please don't yeah. lick my feet again. Um, but yeah, I, I think that that's that's like something that I I still definitely struggle with. Is you get mean comments, you get something mm-hmm. that's rough, and um. Oh, yeah. And you know, it's like, if you look at the ratio of likes to dislikes on my videos, it's like, okay, like 99% mm. of people yeah. <laughs> enjoyed this and didn't but have any issues. Then you hang on to that one guy's, the one guy I said, right? Because it's just, that's one of the things that's interesting about brains, like, like uh, is that like, brains aren't wired to make us happy, right? Brains are wired to keep us alive, right? So like, if you have 99% of people who are like, really saying good things to you your brain like doesn't even register it sometimes because it doesn't doesn't recognize it as a threat right and so like if it's a threat then like that's why you can you kind of fixate on that one percent of like negativity right because it's it feels more threatening it feels like it's like encroaching on you right exactly. and and it sucks because it's like you know if you look just did the data science and the mathematics and the statistics on it then like obviously if you just look at it purely rationally right then like it's silly to focus on that right but like yeah brains are weird they're really weird yeah. <laughs> oh you know it's it's the common trope that like, bad news is so much more incendiary or so much more popular than good news mm-hmm. is because playing on our fears is what we remember mm-hmm. you know it like 
oh, this this berry tasted good is yeah. a little less important because you yeah. need a lot more berries. Yeah. Or you can experiment and search for berries versus this this berry will kill you. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, oh, which yeah. one is or, more, or more like more a more tiger more. or yeah. like, you know, if you have like an interaction with a tiger or something like that, you're like, yeah, I, I need to not interact with that. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's you can. And like, it's interesting, too, because like one of the other things that is like I found interesting about like just virality in general, that's kind of different is that like it kind of makes your content go towards like not your niche right so there's gonna be just like you're gonna get very different people as well so like it's not even just that it's one percent of like people who are saying negative things a lot of times like it's one percent of people that like would never buy anything from you one percent of people who would never you know you know, cheer you on anyway right and it's like it's not like it's even someone who you could like turn turn around right and uh and i think that that's like another thing that's interesting about going viral is that like your content gets shown to a lot of people who like like aren't your audience right and and that's and that's i guess that's one of the parts about going viral that i i wish like linkedin was better about where it's like okay like we want this to go viral but just, just keep showing it to like just data engineers or just data people but just show it to like all of them right and like instead of like just show it to like i don't know just random people and their friends or whatever and the network kind of branches out that way like and uh, like because I think if that would happen, I think that posts like good, good viral content would actually really create a lot more like comment threads and discussion because like there wouldn't be as much like just pol polarizing like attacks and stuff like that. Right. It would it'd be more of like people wanting to engage in the discussion and talking about the nuance. I've had that sometimes on LinkedIn as, as well. Right. Where like I actually do get these really long comment threads that and that kind of virality I really like. That and, and and because it's like, okay, I know that this discussion is providing a lot of value to people. And so, and it was interesting because like earlier on in my like journey on LinkedIn, I was like, I was just too focused on engagement and just getting likes and views and shares and stuff like that. And like, especially I know like, like last October, like there was a bunch of like uh, posts I made that were not really true to my brand, but I knew if I said them, that like I would probably get more views, right? <laughs> and uh, and I was just at that time I was also kind of experimenting with like where I wanted to take my brand, right? And I and I realized that like yeah I don't want to be the like uh, like say like wild thing say shocking wild thing brand right even though it does get views and you can go viral and it can get shared a lot like it's I don't know it's that kind of stuff is where like. I'm like, yeah, I can't do that. I need to be more of like an educator, right? <laughs> well, you know, something I, I think that was both of those things, educating and mm -hmm. in some sense shocking. You shared your, a lot of your salary information this mm -hmm. year. Yeah. And I was wondering what your, yeah, well, it says it in the post, what your, what your mm -hmm. process is and why you shared that. But yep. I'm wondering if you could articulate that a little bit more. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, um, I think for me, one of the things that uh, was has been interesting about my journey in tech is that like, when I look back on my journey, like back in like 2015, right? 2015 was when I got my first data engineering job at Teradata. I started there making about $80,000 a year. I assume by the time I was 30, right? I was going to be making like double that, right? Like, like 150, 160, right? And like, and I thought if I was doing that, I was going to be in a very, very good, amazing situation. And one of the things, I guess, one of the motivators for me to share my salary history and share my compensation stuff is just to kind of like try to inspire people, right? And being like, you don't even realize what you're capable of. Cause I didn't, I didn't, right? I didn't understand. I didn't understand that like, I could do that without managing people or being a director or being a VP, right? Or like all of these things. Like you can really just have really strong technical skills and and if you have those skills, like and, and you can get the good interviews and then you can a lot of times make a lot of money. And like and and I think that it's one of those things that like that I'd say that was the primary motivator. I think the other motivator for me was more around just like I saw a trend. I actually, I, I, I saw like two Instagram reels of other people sharing their salary history and like, 
and both of them were insane. Like the 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 reach on all of them was like really crazy. One of them had like half a million likes or something like that. I was like, what? Like what is going on here? And I realized I was like, I think we're at a cultural moment right now where like people are sick of like salary trend, you know, salary lack of transparency in salary, right? You know, there's there's kind of this uh, there's like this re recurring meme on LinkedIn, right, which is like. Uh, uh, like if someone asks a poll in a poll, like should the salary be in the job description? It's always like 99% say yes, right? It's always like, it's insane. Like how in agreement people on LinkedIn are about that, right? About more transparency with pay, more transparency with compensation and like negotiation too. Cause like negotiation, that was another thing that I knew I was going to do as a follow-up was, um, was having a conversation on just like how to negotiate, how to ask for more, mo how to ask for more money, how to like get what you're worth when you do get an offer, right, and stuff like that as well, right? Because you know it's it's also kind of weird times right now, right, where it's like inflation's happening, right? People are getting laid off, right, and and a lot of the stuff's happening where people are feeling less financially secure now than six months ago, right? And like I think that that that, that was kind of another motivator for me is like my people shouldn't try to negotiate more because that's how that's how you secure your happiness you know and also how you secure the bag yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yeah you know I, I think that that's it's important because salary seems to be so taboo a lot of the time mm -hmm. and you know whether you want to talk about your salary or not you inevitably want to get the best opportunities for yourself as you can mm -hmm. right so it's this weird algorithm where uh, you want to know as much salary information as possible. And a mm -hmm. lot of people don't want to share. And like, you also don't want to share your salary information yeah. at all. Mm -hmm. Right. And you know, why, why don't we want to share our salary information is the good yeah. question. And it's like, yeah. Oh, cause you don't want to find out that the guy next to you is making more mm -hmm. money than you are for doing the same job. Mm -hmm. Right. Like you want to hedge yourself away from that, or you don't, you don't want to feel like, Oh, I just got this job. It's amazing. All this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you find out that another job that, you probably could have gotten pays thirty thousand yeah. dollars more or whatever it might mm -hmm. be, and if we do have more transparency, kind of all those things don't matter, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, you would know. Like it's it's all out there. Yeah, and, and that to me is what what the crazy thing is. It's only taboo because it 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 um be, because of like the ecosystem that we've created. If we created a better, more transparent ecosystem, it wouldn't be taboo at all. Mm -hmm. I think there's some other kind of interesting intersections with culture there though because i think one of the other things about salary being taboo is that like i really believe this at least about american culture is that like your salary is kind of equated with like your worth right and that's like and i think that's one of the things that can make it like that's why it's an un it's an uncomfortable co conversation a lot of the times is because you have um, this kind of underlying pretext about any salary conversation where like, if you say, hey, I make more money than you, you're saying, hey, I'm worth more than you, which is like not even true. Like, I mean, at least from like, from like a human worth perspective, we're all equal, right? That's yeah. like, that's not even, that's like a, it's, it's like a weird thing. Cause it's like, that's one of the things I think has always been so weird about like being American, right? Is that like on one side, we're like, we accept everyone. We're the melting pot. Like, we don't care what race you are, what gender you are, if you're gay, straight, whatever, right? We accept you and we're equal, right? But then on this other side, when we're, like, trying to talk about money and trying to talk about, like, compensation and stuff like that, like, we're, like, different, right? And it's, like, it's, like, a different, it's, like, it's it, it, it seems, like, kind of antithetical to a lot of the other kind of notions that America, like, kind of throws out there, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, that's something... Uh, you know, even since I graduated high school, I've I've struggled with personally is that uh, I, I grew up in Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. right, and Washington D.C. in my opinion kind of has a culture of like like the first question people ask you is what do you do, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. and then they judge you based on that. Like oh oh, mm -hmm. oh like he, oh he's an investment maker. I, I probably could could be friends with him. Or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, you know, oh like, for sure. <laughs> and, and that drives me insane because I mm -hmm. hate playing by those. Like, I hate playing that game. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't want to talk about, like, I want to get to know people. I, 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 like, mm -hmm. what they do is important if it's interesting to me. Yeah. It's like, oh, if someone's a data scientist, like, I know I'll probably have a lot to talk about, with, mm -hmm. talk about them with, but I care a lot more about other things. This episode is brought to you by Z by HP, HP's high compute, workstation grade, line of products and solutions. Z is specifically made for high performance data science solutions 
and I personally use the ZBook Studio and the Z4 Workstation. I really love that Z Workstations can come standard with Linux and they can be configured with the Data Science software stack. With the software stack, you can get right to work doing data science on day one without the overhead of having to completely reconfigure your new machine. Now back to our show. Within my, you know, within where I grew up, like your, your culture, your, your job was really deeply tied to your, to who you are and your value in society. Mm -hmm. And I never wanted to play that game. I was always interested in entrepreneurship. I was always interested in doing different things. Mm -hmm. And I would hope that I could break free of that game these days. But I realized now that people, yes, they care about uh, like your profession or how much money you make, but they also care about your quality of life. So this yep. was a really refreshing thing to me is that, you know, if I go home, a lot of my friends are like, oh, you know, like you can travel when you want. You, you have a lot of these freedoms. Mm -hmm. Like it must be really nice. Like I wish I could do that. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, you kind of can, you know. Oh, yeah. You just have to be willing to take that, the risk. That, that, was the something, things, right? that was something like when I was like that just really amazed me about talking with Alex, right? Where he's like, he's like, dude, I'm an analytics manager. I have three kids and I'm a YouTuber. And I'm just like, dude. Yeah. You, you have it made, man. <laughs> like, holy crap, that's amazing. This is, like, inspiring to be around people who, like, have that stuff figured out, you know? And, like, uh, like yeah, that quality of life stuff of, like, okay, this, like, and, 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 and that's, I, I really hope that, like, people can get further along in that journey a little bit. Because it's, like, sometimes I wonder about my own contribution to this. And with the with the compensation post, it's one that I've I've gone back and forth a bit about, right? Because... There's one side of me that's like, you know, I know there's a lot of people in software and data who like, they really want to work at like Facebook or Fang or any of the big tech companies, right? And like, if we're talking about like the, the actual numbers and data there, like most of them aren't are going to, right? You know, like 90, probably 95-ish percent are probably not going to do it, right? It's, it's more, significantly fewer people actually get to Fang than the number of software engineers total, right? And so like, but it's like, it's one of those things where I really wish that in those places that like there was more like respect for just like technical excellence and technical skill than like, yeah, I have the Google, I have the Google bumper sticker on my resume. So respect me. Right. <laughs> like, and I, I, I don't, I don't know. I, it's, it's society is peculiar in that way right and and i guess like for me that's where this like this post i've kind of felt like i might have been contributing more to that as well right because i did work at facebook and i did work in netflix i'm like there's that kind of the envy component to it or whatever that like i know is like that's why it's kind of this dual-edged sword and that's why you, that, that, like envy is such an, 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 an interesting human emotion right and and it's one of those things where, like, I, I really hope that people have more of this, like, self-awareness, right, about quality of life, right, and being like, hey, I'm happiest under these circumstances, right? And, like, a lot of times that might not be, like, working your face off at Facebook, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you, you know, something that's been very evident, uh, you know, since I've spent more time with you mm -hmm. is, yes, you want to make a good income, mm -hmm. right? That's something that is obviously a priority for you is, like, you're trying yep. to increase total compensation, right? Uh -huh. But it's not like to flex, right? Yeah. No. You want to increase total compensation because at least in the short, medium term, that's what buys you a lot of freedom to like pursue other things like happiness, mm -hmm. uh, content, whatever you'd like to pursue, right? Yeah. And I think that a lot of people are chasing these things. I mean, there's nothing wrong with, with chasing income, right? Mm -hmm. But I think that there's like a fundamental difference between chasing like, the titles and the advancement because like because you want them in and of themselves mm -hmm. or because it's part of this like grander scheme of of like uh, achievement in life that's progressing towards happiness right oh yeah and like and honestly like i feel that that was uh like that was a, a something that changed in my mind over uh the last couple of years where like i like I think that that was one of the things, especially when I was working at Netflix, when I was working there and kind of chasing more compensation and like kind of and doing that of like, I was really kind of this, I had this, I, I talk with my therapist about this sometimes where it's like, we have this kind of notion of like productivity equals worth, right? And then like, 
and and then it's like or compensation equals worth and it's like chasing these things and then it's like i use that as like a shield for like self-esteem and it's like see like i'm a good person see how much money i make right and it's like that's and and what happened for me in that situation was that like i was just like kind of lying to myself so deeply in some in that situation where like that was like the, uh, the only thing i could think about right and i uh like I ended up having a lot of like mental health problems and I was like, dude, I, I can't keep doing this. I can't like, I can't keep doing this to myself. I have to like, I have to rediscover myself. I have to start over. I can't just like keep chasing the bag, keep chasing the money and just like only do that. Right. I have to like do other things as well. Right. And, and that's where like, and then I took that year off, try to discover myself, you know, COVID happened, all this stuff happened. Like 2020 was a crazy year. And then I feel like when I started at Airbnb, I was like, I'm going to do better this time. I'm not going to just be focused on that. Right. And that's where LinkedIn has been really helpful in keeping me more grounded and not being like, just like, no, I must get promoted in two years. I have to get more money. I got to get greatly exceed ex expectations or whatever. Right. I have like, just like get ca getting caught in like the hamster wheel of like, you know, how these corporate jobs, you know, have you, have you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you know, I think that that's a trap that technical people can fall into really easily. Mm -hmm. And that's because like money is, highly quantifiable mm -hmm. right it's something we can evaluate very clearly happiness is super opaque mm -hmm. right or freedom is is relatively opaque. like freedom is measured in mm -hmm. how many pto days you get right yeah and mm -hmm. and you know if like it can be a heuristic it's easy to measure things that way mm -hmm. but it isn't an end goal like that's that's like your fear is fear of looking yourself in the mirror to say okay well i'm gonna look at these things i'm gonna evaluate it on that because Mm -hmm. I don't have the time. I have to work and, and increase this number oh, rather yeah. than think about this. It, it's, it's like m money line go up happy, right? Or whatever, right? It's like very like where it's like, and I, I realized I needed to take a more multifaceted approach to it, right? And one of the things for me, right, uh, that is something I've realized that has been a game changer is that like I really – like so I, I am someone who has always had a really hard time sleeping in my life just like I'm I have a lot of energy it's hard to sleep and like I have to follow a pretty strict routine a lot of the time to just even go to bed and uh so but one of my indicators that is again quantifiable but like is very good at recognizing when I'm like overdoing it when I'm like working too hard or I'm pushing myself too hard and I'm like not caring about my body or my health is like how much I'm sleeping right and if I'm and it's it's not that I can't have a night or two of bad sleep my goal is I want four at least four nights a week where I get eight hours right and that's like kind of like my threshold right and if I have like a week where I'm not doing that like I know that like it's it, it, it correlates pretty much always that that means that there is something in my life that is like too stressful and like it's not and it's usually something that's like self-inflicted right because I'm just working too hard and I'm not I'm not setting the right boundaries I'm not saying no I'm not reprioritizing right stuff like that that and that's been really cool to like have another indicator that's like not just like money it's like okay there's and that's why fitbit's awesome right fitbit's really cool because it can give you the signals from your body or a ring or a ring or rings also yeah that one's also really good so yeah, so so what do you do when things mm. get too stressful and we've, t we've talked yeah. you know there are a couple linkedin posts where mm -hmm. you're like they blew up and mm -hmm. like, you know people are being not nice oh, and being, it's like, yeah, yeah and and they would get overwhelming and then like there's a couple of things like I, I like to try to reset. So uh, there's definitely been times, and this is something that I've tried had to like develop over the last while as like LinkedIn has gotten more out of hand and gotten even crazier. And it's just, it, it just keeps growing and getting crazier and crazier. It's awesome, but like it can be a lot sometimes, right? And so like in May when that happened, right? I know I was like, I know I, it was like third week of May. I was like so spent because I ended up getting, I had three I had three posts that that broke three mil each in may and i was like i can't i can't like when, when that third one went viral i was like no make it stop make the algorithm stop i don't i don't even want i don't even want these views like i don't know it was it was it was a lot and then i it was like i gotta take a break i ended up taking pto and like uh from airbnb and not being on linkedin it's kind of resetting and what i like to do a lot of times with resetting is i like to go to nature and just like experience nature and just be out there as like a human and kind of like connect to like my inner monkey a little bit and be like i I'm, i don't just need to look at a screen every day right i am like i'm a mammal right on this planet on this on this rock right <laughs> and like this is kind of 
connecting more with like more of like my it, pr- primal self, I guess, in some ways, right? And I know that that's a big thing that helps. Uh, other things that I, I recognize that help a lot as well is just like, um, w- like my, my diet usually ends up like getting weird as well when I get stressed out, right? Where like I will just like not eat like until dinner time sometimes like i'll just like freaking like i'll just skip a lot of food and like i'm not eating enough and that it causes like a gnarly like downward spiral right because then i have more stress and that kind of keeps it going keeps that cycle going and so that's like other things is like make sure i'm eating three meals a day take breaks right go to nature make sure i'm you know hugging lulu because lulu definitely helps a lot as well because like she she's because she's just always in that zone right where it's like when i have to i have to like go outside and be like i have to drive for 45 minutes out of sf to just get the same feeling that lulu has all the time (laughs) it's pretty cool yeah you know i i love that you sort of have a system for for dealing when with things get overwhelming Mm -hmm. i think a lot of the times we just try not like, like we try so hard to not let things get overwhelming and we work mm-hmm. so hard towards that, that we forget that they do. Mm-hmm. And then when it happens, we like freak out and we, we crash. Oh yeah. And you know, I've had things get overwhelming enough mm-hmm. many times that you, know, you have to create protocols for yourself. You have to like go to certain places. You have to have things that are, are very structured. Mm-hmm. You know, this trip, I even learned something new. And so, yeah, I spent a lot of time with uh, with Ben Taylor this trip. I spent a lot of time with you. Mm-hmm. And something that, that I realized that you guys do, which I think is really fascinating, is like when you get uncomfortable, you can like move, you can dance. There's like a physical uh, mm-hmm. release of anxiety or, or, or of emotion. Definitely. And that's something that I never do, right? When I get anxious and, mm-hmm. you know, for some reason now, whenever I drink coffee in the morning, mm-hmm. I just get like this paralyzing anxiety at night. Yeah. And I, it doesn't happen with like when I do anything else. Yeah. Right. Like sometimes you, you like, I get that anxious feeling of something's like really going wrong. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, um, I haven't felt that in a long time, yeah. but coffee just makes me do that. Mm-hmm. And I just sit there and I'm just like, yeah, it's like and, frozen. And, you know, like, right. you know I, I started drinking coffee again this trip because I needed to be up mm-hmm. and just like being active, like dancing around my room, like, mm. you know, like really stupid stuff to like listen to music. Like oh, just yeah. like physically releasing the energy mm-hmm. is something that I hadn't like, thought of like, oh, yeah. oh i'm anxious why would i why would i like dance why would yeah. i do these things but it was like very helpful and it's something you know i'm going to integrate it into a lot of my stuff going forward oh yeah Mo- movement is so movement movement is so therapeutic like both like movement that really gets your heart running like that's why i mean i always try to run most days to just because it's just like it takes all that anxious buzzing energy that's like just in my head all the time and like it just shuts it up right it makes me feel like oh good i can i'll be able to sleep so well and um that's a big thing as well yeah i i i I was i definitely noticed that about ben as well i was like dude me and ben are like the same person dude i i i I honestly thought i was like i honestly feel like ben is who i am gonna be in like 25 years (laughs) or something like that dude (laughs) he's only got you by like 10 years yes (laughs) don't don't tell him that (laughs) Yeah, that was messed up. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, Ben, if you're out there, um, that's just hilarious. Huh? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I figure like I'll be like Ben Taylor in like maybe 104 years. Now <laughs> um, he just has 104 years worth of wisdom. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that's what it is. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I got to get Ben back on the on the podcast after all the all the data robots. Uh, oh, oh for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's <laughs> so, such a such a such a story, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Oh my goodness. So, you know, I, I'm interested in in kind of changing gears a little bit. We yep. we obviously had this get together. Mm-hmm. Um, you participated in a data hack. You mm-hmm. participated. I mean, you were involved in, in everything, a lot of forums, whatever it was. What What was mm-hmm. your your favorite thing that we did? That's a good one. Like, so I think there was a couple that I really liked that were kind of different, right? So, like, I really, I did really like the hot tub live stream. I thought that was like because it was just like, I, and it's on Shashank's channel. Yeah, yeah, definitely check that out. Like, it's great. <laughs> it's like I think it was almost like two hours too. It's a, it's a and lot. And just, just lost subscribers too. That's yeah, it's awesome. a yeah. We like he, we thought we were gonna get him like five hundred, and it was like minus ten or something like that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but like um that was really fun i also really liked uh just 
the 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 iron analyst thing that was interesting i haven't done something like that in a very long time like like i haven't done like a hackathon or any like kind of like challenge like that like since like i don't know like 2018 it's been like four years or something like that so that was fun just like kind of busting out the busting out the old code right i think that was cool and those i would say those are the the the, the kind of the events that really kind of stood out to me of the stuff I, but i also really like the um the live streams that we did on like where we were, when we were sitting on the couches and just like you know talking about stuff and like those those are really cool and the, those helped me grow so much too i i i, I gained like almost 400 subscribers on this Let's on this go. trip and like i didn't even post any content like i didn't like i didn't do any promotion it was just it was all because of like the other people's creators and then those people get point back to my channel and then they subscribe to me it's pretty cool i think that that's something really special about this place is that mm -hmm. It doesn't cost me anything to like share someone else's content. Mm -hmm. If anything, it it makes the whole ecosystem better. Oh yeah, and it makes it more likely that other people are going to watch my content because it's like, oh, you know, even if Ken doesn't know about something, mm -hmm. you know, let's take the podcast. He's going to bring in someone who's really knowledgeable in this area that can talk about it. Oh yeah, right. And then I can follow that person and learn more about this area. Like mm -hmm. if I watch Ken more, like. Oh, who 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 knows what other interesting people he'll reference that are specifically relevant to the things that I'm interested in? Um, oh yeah, you know people still do only have a certain amount of time in a in a day, but I'm not going to be super concerned if, uh, you know, if my content isn't being consumed like as much if it means like it's that people are consuming like relevant content more as a whole. Yeah. Right. Definitely. Um, definitely. And like that, like that's definitely one of the things that I've noticed that has helped like my like kind of LinkedIn journey over the last while, because like one of the things that's kind of interesting now on LinkedIn is that like I've generated this kind of like virtuous goodwill cycle. So I, one of my strategies is uh, so four, four times a month, I do it almost exactly like once a week. Uh, I will make a post that I'm like, Hey, follow these people, right? I just make a shout out post of like, yeah. And I usually have like three to five names in the list of people who I like want to follow or who I want people to follow. And like that, those, those like, I know that just those posts themselves are like ridiculously powerful. Like, like sometimes I'll do that. And then people like, I've had some people go from like 5k to like 12k like in like a couple of days and I'm like, that's crazy. That's freaking nuts. And it's like, but that's one of the things that's cool about being like a creator with a pretty big audience is that you can inspire other you creators, can play God. right? No. You can play God. <laughs> you get to decide who's famous on LinkedIn. Right? <laughs> and like, um, but one of the things that's so cool about this though, is that like now uh, the cycle has just gotten so insane where like, Every day I'm on LinkedIn, there's going to be probably two or three posts of people tagging me, like being like, thanks for supporting me or like, thanks for like your content or like, and like, and they, but it's cool because they actually make a post about it, which then like gets me more followers. So like, even if I'm like not creating content now, like I, and I, I tested this out cause I didn't, I, for two weeks in July, I didn't uh, make any content really. I made, I think, I, I think I made like two posts for two weeks in July. And in those, in, in those two weeks, I, um, I still got like, like 3000 followers. Right. And it was mostly from like these, like the network effect of like other people's posts then point back to me and then people follow me because of their reference. And, and, and that's one of the things that is like really important. I think that's one of the things that's really important about being a creator in general is that like, a lot of people think that like being a YouTuber or being a creator and everything is about like having a really good personality and like making good content and like that's the idea, right? But it's like for me at least, the thing that I'm the most attracted to about being a creator is not that. It's it's about building community. It's about building uh you know, building up a lot of people. Like, you know, it's the whole thing of like make sure that like when you're successful that you bring people along the ride, right? Cuz because that's you can change a lot of lives that way, and that's how you can really have a really outsized impact, right? And you're not just like focusing on creating stuff for yourself, but like creating stuff for a community, for sure. Yeah, uh, you know something that has stuck with me for a long time is like your upside is only limited by the amount of value that you can create for other people. Yeah, right. Like you think about, I, I mean, at least for me, in terms of like in terms of happiness in terms of even like finances like the amount that i can 
can like, you know, enjoy or the amount that I can actually earn is mm -hmm. purely dictated on how much value I can create for other people. Mm -hmm. Right. And there's different ways to create value. Like this trip creates value mm -hmm. and it helps create other, other, uh, you know, helps other creators grow. It helps people learn. It helps mm -hmm. like everyone define their own style. Yeah. Um, and that inevitably in some way helps me too, because if these other people are, are, are growing and, and doing really great things and I'm yeah. at least help part of that process, I'm helping well, that comes back to and, me, at least in goodwill. Right. Well, well, and then you have podcast episodes cause it's like, you know, if I get to a million followers, then this podcast episode is going to be like, Oh wow. Zach's on this podcast. Yeah, and like, like dude, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you're going to get more views from that. Right. Exactly. Like you want, you want to like encourage and inspire people. Right. And like, it, it's really, it's really cool how those things can kind of like all go together. I think that's one of the things that is interesting and kind of challenging about the economy in some regards, right? Is because one of the things that's been, I felt very fortunate about my time on LinkedIn is that like, I really haven't monetized that much on LinkedIn, right? And like, I, I and, and it's mainly because like, I get a lot of, I get a lot out of it of just like from teaching people and kind of building goodwill and everything. And now it's like, I'm in a position where I could definitely monetize pretty strongly if I want to. And, um, but a lot of people think that like, okay, once you're at 5,000 followers, you can start like making a lot of money or whatever. Right. And like most of the time that's not going to happen. Right. You need to spend, you need to spend a significant amount of time doing this because you love it. Right. Not because like you're going to be making money from it. Right. And, and I think that like, if you can spend that time generating that goodwill and generating that brand and building it up, then you can get to that point where like it can just be your income, right? It can just be the piece that carries you on and you can get out of the nine to five journey. Right. And so, yeah, well, yeah. you know, it's, it's interesting what you said, like you have to do it cause you enjoy it. Like I, I did a mm -hmm. quick analysis where I added up all of my YouTube earnings from everything, mm -hmm. like affiliates, sponsors, uh, ad revenue, all of that stuff. And I mm -hmm. looked at how many hours I spent on YouTube Yeah, and it, it's like, yeah. Crap. Wage. <laughs> yeah you're like right. you're like making like minimum wage yeah, pretty much, pretty much, right? <laughs> and you know it won't, it won't be like that forever i don't expect mm -hmm. but you know i've been in this for i think three years now something like mm -hmm. that and you know it's, trust me it's it's if, if i'm looking at the numbers the profit motivation is is mm -hmm. is not there i mean obviously i understand that there is long-term upside and so i think about that but yeah. it, it, it's just a, a an interesting thing to think about is like okay well if i turn that focus on value the other stuff will take care of it if i inherently mm -hmm. enjoy the value i create for other people and like if i think about it, like look at the freaking value i've gotten mm -hmm. right i have a platform i can share what i think and try to like make an impact yeah. i have more friends that mm -hmm. are like meaningful to me um, definitely than i've ever had in my entire life Right? Yeah, and definitely. That, that I can talk to consistently, that I can get feedback on, that are like enriching my life, um, and, and that that to me is like mind blowing. That that through just like making silly videos on the internet, I've been able to get so much like, such a value new life, life. Right? You yeah. just made a brand new life for yourself, right? And like you can you can do so much interesting stuff that way, like and like all the all the kind of the unexpected kind of benefits of doing these things, and because it's like. That's the part about it that like I find interesting about like kind of like the um, like kind of the income growth curve is it's a different curve, right? Whereas like when you were working a job, it's more of like a line that kind of keeps going up, but kind of more slowly. And then like for like a YouTube content thing, it's like really, really flat for a long time. And then it kind of like goes more and then it kind of hockey sticks up. Right. And it's like not quite, it's not like a linear, like 5% raise here, 10% raise here. It's like one year it might be 300% or something like that. Right. Depending on what, what ends up landing and like I what literally yeah. I think doubled my income from YouTube. Mm -hmm. The first three years, yeah. like each year it doubled. And well, like, I mean, it's yeah. still not like, yeah it's that it's not even sniffing like data science income still <laughs> but it's like oh like, oh like yeah you know what job have i ever had that i got more than like mm -hmm. a 10 percent raise at one time yeah right yeah it's and, and 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 if you think about it like from the perspective of like okay if it's doubled if, if that trajectory continues you know if you if, if it's not looking like it will this year, but <laughs> who knows but if it is if it doubles like like two or three more times then like you're, you're good yeah, man i mean then, then you're then you're then you're like mr beast at that yeah. point dude right <laughs> exactly. yeah you know i i also 
it, it's interesting across the various platform like linkedin is tough for monetization mm -hmm. but you know you have such a, a large brand you have these you know mm -hmm. to, you have a youtube channel that has Mm -hmm. almost 10,000 subscribers with without, five videos yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, 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 it's 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 so cool that you can create this network effect across platforms and, mm -hmm. and i'm excited to see what the the future holds for you after yeah. you've been even more inspired by this trip yes oh yeah i'm feeling it feeling it feeling it real good like and yeah that's gonna be there's gonna be so much and I, I already have all these more fresh ideas like spinning in my head of like all these different like ideas of just like kind of like courses and educational content and like community building and like that's the other thing I got a really good kind of picture into is like how these things are kind of done right because community building is definitely one like a like a discord slack group or whatever of just like like-minded people talking that's definitely that's a, that's definitely a product idea that I think is really powerful right especially if you can get like because that's one of the one of one of my goals as a creator I feel is like building a community where like it's not just like all of these nodes connected to me, but then these nodes connect to each, each other, other yeah. right? And then you can build like kind of a network graph, right? And that's how like they like a bunch of people meeting and teaching each other through me. That would be ideal because that's scalable, right? That's not just like my time always, right? Because I I've not wanted because there's no way if you have a million followers or a hundred thousand followers, there's no way you can give all of them your time right or at least on one-on-one -on -one basis or whatever even on a group basis right it's it's challenging right but like that's where if you can kind of set up a culture of learning and and you attract the right people then you can build these cool communities where like you have this crazy impact that is that that, that is almost out like it's so crazy because it's like it's impact that is really positive but it's also kind of outside of your control but it is inside of your control but in a very like like systemic level right and like because you need to your brand needs to attract the right people that then can connect to each other and it's one of those things that i'm like how like if you ask people like okay how do you do that it's I don't know. It's it, it's it's a it's an interesting question and an interesting thing that I've been thinking about a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's a really fun challenge. I think scale is constantly what is on my mind as mm -hmm. I continue to foolishly take on more than I can handle. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and you know, this year I I've, I tried to do probably too much. Mm -hmm. Where you know I, I still have do YouTube. I've kind of toned down videos just because I've been super busy with other stuff the yeah. podcast this is probably mm -hmm. the most important thing to me I yeah just, like love oh, talk, like love talking to my friends on camera oh yeah lot, definitely right? definitely um but then you know it was learn media stuff with planning trips like this my actual job which mm -hmm. um is picking up a lot right now and it's like geez i need to figure out how to scale things mm -hmm. and reduce things at the same time like create the systems but also create scale and you know that maybe that's probably one of those things that like you're always just working towards and you never actually achieve yeah but it's been more clear now than ever in my life that like wow i need to dial back but scale up at the same time oh, and yeah. that those two things sound like opposing forces but mm -hmm. they don't necessarily have to be if you uh, do well, it right. especially if you put yourself into the like because if you put yourself into the the highest leverage situation that you can, right, where like you like every minute of your time is spent on the most important critical pieces of the mission, but then the other pieces that are like you can trust someone to do it seventy percent as well as you, mm -hmm. then those pieces you can pass off, right? You can delegate, and yeah, I, I need to I need to do that. Like one one of the things that I need to do, and I need to find like this right person is like. Because it's something that, like, I, I feel is, like, such a perplexing problem. Because, like, uh, so on LinkedIn, right, like, DMs on LinkedIn are just, like... The LinkedIn the, the, messaging system is, it's, is it, like yeah, criminal. It's, it's, it's criminal. And then, like, if, if you have a large fo following, it's, like, it's just... It's, it's broken because like sometimes I'll even get messages from like people who I really care about and they'll message me on LinkedIn and then it's like it just falls to the bottom right it falls into the freaking sea the of abyss, DMs dude. right yeah. and it's like and then I feel like a jerk because I'm like oh yeah I, I dropped I, I, I missed that message and I'm like so I know I need to like manage that better I know that like there's this um, someone I follow named Leah Turner the way that she does LinkedIn is amazing like, she has like these assistants and people that like manage yeah. different aspects of like the like linkedin like 
process of like DMs, comments, all that different, all those different things. And like, you can, cause I know like as I, as I build up more like product offerings, this will be more important right now. It's not as important because like, I don't have, like I can talk with people and get their feedback, but that's not as valuable as like, if I can make a sale or if I can make a sale, then that's something that would be cool. Cause if I can get inbound, inbound sales, like that's literally like the easiest sale, right? Because it's like, they're coming to you asking you for like what, what, what they should learn. It's like, and if you have an, if you have the solutions for them, then that's yeah that's you can make a lot of sales that way right <laughs> yeah, dude. Hell, yeah. Mm-hmm. incredible I, you know i, I think I, i'm really excited to see where where things scale up to you i'm excited mm-hmm. for you to have some actual offerings some inbound stuff coming up here oh yeah and um it's exciting know, those are really all the questions i had thank you so much yeah, yeah for sure Any, thank you for having me here to, anything to add anything to end with uh we need to do a lot more of these meetups like I, these meetups yeah. are really inspiring and like i'm really excited to you know the people who weren't able to make it this time hopefully they can make it to the next one because like these are these are really really good they're really really good we'll use that yeah. as propaganda for yes for sure for sure like this make one. this little youtube short right and then just like send it to everybody be like shame them like you got to be on the next one <laughs> amazing yeah We're shooting for two of year um and uh you know hopefully they continue to continue to get better mm-hmm. hopefully we continue to bring in awesome sponsors like yeah. bright data oh uh, yeah who, who made this one possible awesome